Welcome to this presentation on our Gazetteer of Bow Plans Ukraine, which we have prepared for the 2018 International Conference of Historical Geographers in Warsaw, Poland. An overview of the general process for creating a Gazetteer of Historical Places can set a context for this description of the Gazetteer of Bow Plans Ukraine project. Of course, the first step in the process is to secure sources of historical data, followed by selection of modern sources that will be used to geolocate historical places. Geolocation and related information is then extracted from these sources and stored in a Gazetteer database, which can then be applied to answering research questions. There is one more issue that must be addressed when creating a Gazetteer database. A key element to the process is definition of a database structure that appropriately captures the information extracted from all sources and that makes its information available in a way that is useful when filling the database and applying the database to answer research questions. This presentation addresses each element of the process. While this diagram implies a sequential process, in reality this is typically an iterative process with many false starts and much backtracking. In fact, the process is best started at the application step by beginning with the end in mind. What specifically is the Gazetteer database to be used for? If the product of this process does not accommodate anticipated applications, the entire exercise is essentially a waste of time and resources. Note also that all of these elements are interdependent and that decisions and changes to each element at any point in the process can be expected to impact other elements. The first step in preparing a gazetteer of historical places is to secure sources of historical data. In 1630, Boplan traveled to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth to begin a 17-year military career in the Crown Army. His account of this period was published in 1660. In addition to providing a coherent tableau of 17th century Ukrainian landscape, peoples, flora, and climate, Boplan's work provides a major cartographic description of this region. The purpose of the Gazetteer of Boplan's Ukraine project is to provide a georeferenced database for places shown on Boplan's maps. Here is the list of Boplan maps that we have been using to prepare our Gazetteer. These maps show populated places, rivers, river fords, rapids, islands, forests, mountains, and valleys, all of which we have included in our Gazetteer. The code column seen here provides the codes used to identify the maps shown in the remainder of this presentation. Note that we still have a number of maps that we can examine to add places to our Gazetteer. Here is an example of one of Boplan's maps, with four cities shown for reference. Note that the TGU map has north at the top, but many of Boplan's maps have north at the bottom. Here is a close-up of this map. As you can see, the maps can get pretty dense, and place names are not always perfectly legible. While our work has focused on extracting locations of places on Boplan maps to enter into our Gazetteer database, Boplan's maps are great sources of other types of historical information for this region. 
Boplan's maps identify a variety of types of places, as well as identifying who owned the places. The maps even show popular clothing styles of the times. Note that this boat plan map has north at the bottom. Of particular interest on boat plans maps is information on rapids, islands, rivers, and fords that no longer exist. For example, this map shows 13 river rapids and a number of islands that are now submerged under the Dnieper River but were critical to river traffic in the 1600s. For this bow plan map, north is at bottom, but the map has been flipped to correspond to the Google Earth map of the region. Turning now to modern sources of data, Two sources were used to locate modern places that could be associated with places on Beauplan's maps. The GeoNames database was checked first for association between Beauplan places and modern places. As described later in this presentation, our process for locating Beauplan places involves downloading the GeoNames database. If no association could be made using the GeoNames database, then the Google physical map was checked. Maps of elevation and rivers can be useful when attempting to locate bullpen places that are not easily associated with modern places shown by GeoNames in Google Maps. Rivers in particular are useful since many populated places shown in bullpen maps are located on or near rivers. Here you see rivers and elevation base maps for a portion of the region covered by Beauplan's maps. These maps were created as part of our Base Maps of Ukraine project, which you can download from the links shown. Now we get to the most challenging part of the process of creating a gazetteer of historical places, which is definition of a gazetteer database structure. What you see here is the result of many iterations resulting in these 13 database fields. We will examine the database fields in greater detail later in this presentation, but here it is particularly important to stress the difference between the entry ID and the place ID as found in the first two database fields. A particular place may appear on multiple Beauplan maps with multiple spellings on each map. And in our database, each such instance of a place has a separate entry ID value as the first field in the database. But since all of these entries are associated with the same place, all entries have the same place ID value in the second field of the database. Let's look at a specific example. Here is an example of a place that appears on two different boat plan maps with two different spellings on each map. The result is four database entries, each with a unique entry value, but all with the same ID value. So here we have one place on two maps with two spellings on each map, producing four entry values, all with the same ID value. Please note that the approach we took for handling many-to-many -many relationships of the type that we just saw could be handled better using a linked data approach such as RDF. Unfortunately, this is beyond the expertise of our team, 
So a conversion to a linked data structure could be a next step for the Gazetteer of Oplans Ukraine. That being said, we do use URLs for seven of our 13 database fields per recommended linked data practices. Each of these URLs is a link to an actual web page. Here we see the URL for database entry 12, linked to the web page for entry 12, which itself has links to other web pages. The field names shown on the entry web page link to pages containing information about each field. For example, here is the web page describing the map field. For this example, the map field value links to a page for the particular map on which the entry can be found which in turn links to an online digital version of the actual Boplan map. Here is an example of a database map field link to an actual digital online copy of one of the Boplan maps where this particular database entry can be found. This map can be found at the National Library of France. As mentioned, the GeoNames database is the first place check for association with a Boplan place. When such an association can be established, the GeoNames ID field contains the URL of the GeoNames webpage for the place. Note that the GeoNames database contains alternate place names, which can be very helpful in associating Boplan places with modern places. Note also that GeoNames has a very simple mechanism for adding places to its database. So for cases in which a Boplan place appears on Google Map, but not in GeoNames, we have added the place to GeoNames. This creates a new GeoNames ID value that we can add to the associated database entry. Moving on to data extraction, our tool for locating Boplan places is QGIS, a free geographic information system. Here, we see the GeoNames database that we downloaded, now loaded as a layer into a QGIS project. As we associate Boplan places with GeoNames places, we add them to a QGIS shapefile layer which we ultimately convert to a CSV format database file. Note again that the GeoNames database includes alternate place names, which can be very helpful in finding Boplan places. Per the preceding example, we see that Boplan's place named Sosanka appears in the GeoNames database as Sosanka. We also see the two Boplan spellings for the associated modern place named Priluki. And we see a place on a Boplan map that we could not associate with a place in the GeoNames database or on the Google map, but which we placed as shown based on surrounding landmarks. As noted, we also used our base maps of Ukraine rivers and the Google physical map, shown here as layers on our QGIS project, to find bowl plan places that we couldn't find using geonames. Here we see some current statistics on our filled database. The difference between the total and unique counts occurs because some places are shown on multiple maps and or with multiple spellings. 
We will return to a discussion of location confidence and name confidence after completing this overview of the Gazetteer generation process. A Gazetteer database is essentially useless unless it can be applied to practical problems. Here is one application of the GBU Gazetteer. In the early modern period, regular roads were virtually non-existent in the region covered by Boplan's maps, and overland travel tended to follow general paths that conducted travelers between destinations as expeditiously as possible. Schlock, a Polish word meaning trail, was the name given to paths used to traverse the Pontic Steppe. One problem that we have applied our gazetteer to is tracing the Czarny Schlock, the Kuczmiński Schlock, and the Moraski Schlock which are shown on multiple Boplan maps. These trails were important trading routes in the early modern period and were often used by slave raiders engaged in the Black Sea slave trade that saw the abduction or death of some two million people. You can access our Schlock Pass at the links shown. Here we see a section of one of Boplan's maps that traces the Charny Schlock. Using place locations from our Gazetteer of Plans Ukraine and rivers from our base maps of Ukraine, we trace the Schlock routes as shown. Note that we have flipped this Boplan map so that you can compare it with a modern Google map of the area. In this particular case, our tracing coincides with a modern rail line that appears to have been constructed virtually on top of this section of the Charny Schlock. Not surprisingly, correspondence between schlock paths and modern rail lines and roadways appears to be quite common. We have also used our gazetteer to provide a geographic context for a description of the 1542 border dispute that failed to establish a border between Poland Lithuania and the Ottoman Empire. A key sticking point in the negotiations was which river should serve as the border, the Kodama River or the Savran River. This application of our gazetteer allows us to answer a number of questions about the border dispute. Here we see a section of one of Boplan's maps that shows the disputed territory and a map of rivers, schlock paths, and river fords that we constructed by extracting information from multiple Boplan maps. What is important to note is that the disputed region contains many river fords and lies close to the Kuczmiński schlock. Providing a geographic context to this topic reveals the importance of the disputed territory. The historical Polish-Lithuanian border claim is shown here in red, and the Ottoman border claim at the time of the dispute is shown in blue. Between these claims lies a large area claimed by both polities. Providing this geographical context to the 1542 border dispute reveals the strategic significance of the small area between the Savran and Kodama rivers. This view of terrain, river, and river ford locations reveals a natural attack and defense corridor through the disputed territory and between Poland Lithuania to the northwest and the Ottoman Empire to the southeast. This completes our overview of our gazetteer construction process. We will now address some of the details behind the gazetteer and the construction process. Regarding access to our project materials, the gazetteer of both plans Ukraine database and other related materials are available for download from our Bo plans Ukraine Harvard Dataverse. In line with Harvard Dataverse policies, the Gazetteer of Boplans Ukraine database and all other related materials 
are available per a Creative Commons CC0 license. You can copy, modify, and distribute our materials without asking permission. In addition to the GBU Gazetteer database CSV file, you can also see the database entries projected onto web maps, namely the Harvard World Map and the QGIS Cloud Map. It is also possible to do an online search for places in the GBU Gazetteer database. Using the Google search engine, enter a search term as shown here, and then follow the link to see the Gazetteer entry for the place you are searching for. Note that the site portion of the search term limits your search to places in the GBU Gazetteer database. Previously, we described how the GBU handles many-to-many -many relationships. Let's see how this works with the Google Site Search. A Google Site Search of the database for a place named Podhaicha returns a database entry with an entry value of 3006 and an ID value of 516. A follow-on search for entry 516 returns the entry with ID 3006, but also another entry with ID 1176, thereby revealing a second database entry for the same place, but with different name spelling and map source. Returning now to the discussion of our database structure, we will examine our map grid system, the manner in which we quantify our confidence in our Gazetteer location data, and Gazetteer place name confidence. The primary task in creating an entry in a Gazetteer database involves going from a place on a historical map to a place on a modern map. But actually using the information in the database may involve going from an entry in the database back to the associated place on historical map. The Gazetteer map grid structure provides the ability to locate a database entry on a Bowplan map. A map grid is created for a particular map by drawing grid lines between these markers and then labeling the resulting grid squares. Using markers that are actually shown in a bow plan map allows anyone with access to the map to recreate grid squares that correspond to our Gazetteer map grid squares. Note here that while projecting actual lines of latitude onto a flat map produces curved lines, for the sake of simplicity, our grid lines are drawn as straight lines between the latitude markers and longitude markers shown on Bowplan's maps. Here are two examples of the use of map grids to locate the Bowplan place named Temruk. Note that due to discrepancies between the two maps, this place is located in grid square W15 on one map and Q14 on the other map. Returning to our database statistics, we will now examine how we assess our confidence in location and name spelling data. In many cases, a Bowplan place can be associated with a modern place with a high degree of confidence, but there are cases where the association is not strong. 
Here we see the rules that we apply when assigning location confidence levels to places. Note that these confidence levels appear in the GBU database as URLs that link to definitions of each level. A similar scheme is used to assign named confidence levels to places. This section of the TGU map shows a number of places with difficult to decipher names, so have been assigned low name confidence. Being a manual process, entering values into the Gazetteer database is error prone. In order to improve the quality of the data, the database is tested per the rules shown here. The rules are applied after a set of new entries are added and corrections are made as needed. Each of these eight tests is run one at a time starting at the top. Corrections are made after each test and the sequence of tests is then rerun starting with the first test since corrections can themselves introduce errors. In addition to GBU, Gazetteer, CSV, and shapefiles, our project Dataverse contains a description of the GBU project, a PowerPoint presentation on our project, and this movie. In conclusion, we must cite some current problems with our work. We have not used a standard database structure, which can limit the use of our data by others. More specifically, the database is not structured as linked data. Further, the Gazetteer database is not searchable via a dedicated search engine like Pleiades, and there is currently limited awareness of our Gazetteer. Unfortunately, our team does not currently have the resources and expertise to solve these problems, so we are looking for a partner to help us address these concerns. You can check our project blog for updates on these and other GBU project issues. Thank you for your attention. We hope this work can be of benefit to you.